Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall continuous coverage from EMC World 2012 in Las Vegas. And joining me is Dominic Delfina from Cisco. Dominic, first time on theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Yes it is, Stu, thanks for having me here, I really appreciate it. Great, so, so what we look to do here on theCUBE is we find you know, the, the smartest and, and most interesting uh, people with the, the most interesting stories and try to extract the signal from the noise, share it out there with the community, uh, and, and help people understand some of the, the, the big changes that are happening uh, you know, in, in the ecosystem today. So Cisco uh, obviously is a, a long partner uh, of EMC's. Uh, can, can you give our audience a little bit of a background as to uh, your position at Cisco and uh, how long have you been working uh, with, within the Cisco EMC relationship? Sure, sure, thanks Stu. Uh, so I've been at Cisco now 12 years and uh, I'm the Senior Director of Systems Engineering for the Americas for our data center product portfolio. Uh, data center today includes our steroids networking products, our data center's ethernet switching portfolio, as well as our unified computing system platform. Uh, I've been with the EMC relationship from day one, so about 10 years now I've been working very closely with them in the field, and uh, it's, it's, it's uh, evolved many times over over the course of the last 10 years, and I think the relationship is now as strong as it's ever been. So, so to be specific, Dominic, I think we're talking about when Cisco actually got into uh, solutions that support storage applications. Because uh, actually, I, I worked when I started at EMC back in 2010. Uh, Cisco was a partner uh, with some of the uh, kind of the Oracle solutions. Uh, there was an, they kind of did ECO, the EMC Cisco uh, Oracle, Oracle relationship. Line, yes. So it, it is a long, deep relationship. Uh, most people are aware, you know, uh, Joe Tucci and John Chambers have a, have a long relationship. Sure. But storage side, absolutely, for the last 10 years. And if you're handling uh, the field guys, you, are, you're pretty much the Cisco version the Chad Sackage? I am the, the Chad Sackage uh, for Cisco Data Center products. Okay, so um, what what is face melting in your opinion <laughs> uh, with uh, what's going on in the field between Cisco and EMC? You know, I, I, th I think it's really interesting. Uh, um, you know, if we roll back the clock 10 years, uh, you know, we were, we were a provider maybe to EMC of storage networking technology, which was a small subcomponent of the overall solution they would provide to uh, a customer. but. Um, I, I think through our innovation in partnership with EMC and our joint solutions, we really started to take a systems approach with our customers where they saw joint, joint value out of that. Now fast forward uh, over the course of the last 10 years and the evolution of conversion infrastructure, um, what we're doing with our joint investment, not only Cisco and EMC, but VMware and Intel with the VCE company, right, the virtual computing environment, and the advent of vBlocks, which is our converged infrastructure stack, uh, in addition to now vSpecs, which is, is, is more an architectural reference-based design, we're really able to bring to market a, uh, a complete cloud solution for our customers. So uh, the relationship is growing every quarter extensively. Our biz joint business is growing together extensively. Uh, our number of customers, our number of references, the size of their infrastructures, the repeat business that we're doing with them, has just really taken the relationship to the next level there. Okay, great. So, uh, you know, Wikibon has done lots of research looking at the, this trend of converged infrastructure, mm -hmm. and, and while it is relatively new, Cisco's been at the forefront mm -hmm. here. Uh, one thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is, you know, we know about the hardware, we know about the software, but it's really the, the services. It's the, the people like your systems engineers, the VCE folks that are in the mm -hmm. field, and the channel is a very significant uh, part of that. So, uh, you know, how does, how does the channel play into what your folks in the field are doing. Uh, can you spot, talk a little sure. bit about kind of vBlock v and maybe even vSpecs? Right, right, so certainly uh, uh, vBlock is, is, is a, a very advanced solution. It's a, you know, what we would refer to in Cisco as a whole offer or a, or a whole stack uh, relative to, you know, customers kind of had a choice in the market before. It's kind of roll your own, right? or maybe use an architectural reference and try to base your, 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 your system's design off of that. So uh, with, with uh, vBlock, it's a total converged infrastructure, it's, 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 a, uh, it's a fixed configuration, it's standardized, it's, it's tested, there's a single number for support, and we take it to market through VCE and our mutual channel partners between Cisco and EMC. Now, as you look at vSpecs, uh, something that's, that's uh, uh, more flexible, it's a very, very channel-centric program in order to get to the market. So, um, the Cisco proven partners, uh, the EMC proven partners, my apologies, uh, uh, it will be the exclusive route to market for vSpecs. Um, it gives that, uh, that flexibility for customers who kind of want to, I want to follow a reference architecture or design, but I don't necessarily want a fully converged infrastructure. I may want to deviate from it in some aspects, in some areas, in certain ways. And the channel partners, 
will come in with their professional services in order to tailor that solution really specifically and finally to down, down to those customer needs. Okay, so, so one of the biggest challenges we see in moving from kind of the siloed approach to more of the converged holistic approach is, is really skill sets. And, and your team has to be at the kind of forefront and have done this, so you know, the network silo, the storage folks, <laughs> yeah. cross training, it, it, you know, People can't know everything. Right. We talked about automation is going to help that, mm -hmm. but, but still we, there's, there's an evolution of the workforce. Um, and so in the channel side, we've seen some of the good Cisco partners have really started a whole brand new data center practice mm -hmm. around what they're doing. I uh, wonder, wonder if you've got any stories to tell us as to it, what, what you're seeing it, there. It's a great point, right? Because as we look at converged infrastructure today, as we look at bringing um, compute, network, storage, security together, that, that combined skill set doesn't really exist in the market today, right? So it's typically those technologies have existed in silos, or as my customers tell me, cylinders of excellence, right? Um, but even as a challenge for Cisco, uh, bringing UCS alone to market where it's a converged infrastructure where you require networking skills, you require computing skills, operating system skills, uh, um, um, security, virtualization skills, uh, it creates a substantial opportunity for our partner base, right? You know, customers who have long-standing practices with networking or storage or compute aren't typically going to go to those partners for help in those areas and for services to provide help in those areas. But when it comes to the more leading edge, the converged infrastructure, that skill set that's not necessarily readily available in the market where it can go higher or rent some talent for a short period of time, they're really going to rely on those partners. So those partners are investing early, building those skill sets, building those next generation data center practices within their organizations, and, and they're seeing the services stream associated with having those practices and making that investment. Okay, so you know, obviously there's a, there's a long and deep partnership uh, between, between Cisco and EMC. Uh, we've actually seen an increase of networking here in EMC world. Uh, for the first time in a few years, it's actually not conflicting with Interop, uh, so maybe that helps get a few more networking people here, but we're also seeing some partners that hadn't been here before. So Brocade and Cisco obviously have long storage relationships, but now kind of Juniper and Arista are here, Broadcom's here, uh, some of those partners. So uh, can you maybe kind of address you know, what, it, what you think this means to the ecosystem and, and the relationship with Cisco and EMC? You know, I, I think it's a great point, right? So as you look at uh, cloud, right? Cloud's about a system, right? And a system is, is, again, the combination of compute, network, storage, virtualization, applications, orchestration, automation, all of those things working together and in conjunction with each other. And um, I, I think as we look at historically how vendors competed for customers' dollars, it was all about price, performance, power consumption, latency, all of these finite detailed uh, uh, metrics, which are still important, it's still important to be a market leader in those different technology areas, but now the real value that you bring to a customer is about operational transformation, right? How do I help you transform your operation, make these things, deliver on the promise of cloud, make these things easy to use, make them work in conjunction with each other. Uh, does the virtualization guy know networking? No, but he has a lot of networking implications on deploying virtualization, so how do I bring some of the simplicity of networking into a technology like vCenter, right, and give him the, the, the abstraction mechanism he uses to administer an environment while maintaining the security and diagnostics from a networking perspective. All of those things are very important. It's more and more as you look at the data center as a system, if any one component along the way breaks, it doesn't work. So it's about bringing these things together as a system now. That's delivering on the promise of cloud. Okay, so uh, just change direction a little bit here. If we look at the networking industry itself, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, if you looked kind of for, through the late 90s and most of the 2000s, it was almost a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. Cisco just dominated the market mm -hmm. in technology. We were going kind of step functions, mm -hmm. but there's so much innovation happening in networking today. We talk about flattening the network, mm -hmm. uh, things like Fabric Path from Cisco, uh, the SDN and OpenFlow are lots of discussions. Right. Um, can you tell me, where do you find your field force educating, you know, what's the, what's the hottest technologies that customers want to learn about, and, and what things are people actually deploying today that people might be surprised to find out about? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, on the theme of converged infrastructure, obviously you see converged I.O. or unified I.O., whatever term you want to use for that. Uh, extremely hot technology, if you look at... Uh, so, so, just what, what technology specifically? Are you talking about FCOE? Fiber channel over Ethernet, okay. uh, FCOE. I, I think uh, the, the skepticism on the adoption of FCOE has been quelled at this point, okay. particularly with the success of the unified computing system. So, so, so I, I, let's dig into that for a second, because sure. if we look at FCOE adoption, I think there was you know, huge hype that it's going to kind of you know, mm -hmm. knock off fiber channel and, and it kind of changed mm -hmm. this market, and it, it's 
right now mostly at the, the server end, either embedded in Blade servers or, you know, because some of the top of rack, obviously right. the Nexus product lines, and obviously w w I think we have some proof points that Cisco has of end-to-end -end and broader deployments, but um, most people I think would say that it hasn't reached, you know, general adoption and fully out there and you know it seems to be Cisco leads a lot of that conversation. Sure. So do, do you have any metrics or adoption well, stories I, you can I, share? I can tell you for this, you know, looking at FCOE in an existing production environment, nobody's going to shut down their servers, rip out their NICs and their HBAs, replace them with CNAs, bring them back up. So it's more a brownfield, greenfield opportunity moving sure. forward. So if you look at our 13,000 plus UCS customers, 90% yep. of them using FCOE yep. as their predominant mechanism for access to I.O. Yeah, and, right? and, and uh, you see on H, HP's latest generation sure. and even IBM uh, on the, the mm -hmm. Blade servers, they have lots of FCOE inside. It just doesn't get talked about a lot because it's kind of hidden right. from everybody. Um, and, and now, combine that with, with, with SDN, yep. right? And you know, SDN, it's kind of like using the term cloud means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I'm sorry, people. was that clown or cloud? Cloud, yeah, cloud, sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's all right, we okay. use Freudian slip maybe. Yeah, some Freudian of the, slip Some maybe. of the big terms out there. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, I think if you look at, at, at SDN, right, there's, there's, there's a lot of different methodologies for SDN. Open flow is one of them, overlay networks is another one, control plane centralization, control plane separation, and, and a combination of those will play out over the next few years as this starts to mature. Uh, look at the concept of a unified port on a Nexus 5000, right? The ability to program my infrastructure to be whatever I need it to be for the, for the deemed requirements for that infrastructure, right? So do I need it to be Ethernet? Do I need it to be uh, fiber channel Ethernet? Do I need it to be native fiber channel, right? So that is a mechanism of SDN um, as well. So I, I think as you see these different things playing out here uh, over the years, you will see that FCOE adoption continue to increase further and further uh, as we go along. Okay, great. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about what, what have you seen here at EMC World? Have, have you been to the show before? What, what, where are you spending your time you know, this week? Probably my, uh, uh, my seventh or eighth time here at, at EMC World. I think they've got a room named after me here at the Palazzo. There's a meeting room named Delfino. So, um, you know, uh, again, uh, um, I think uh, as, as we see continued emphasis and interest for our customers on converged infrastructure, uh, we certainly see continued emphasis and interest in the Green Plum solution for, uh, um, for uh, Hadoop type environments or, or big data requirements. Uh, uh, you know, certainly lots of talk about vSpecs, uh, the Cisco EMC relationship, the Cisco EMC VMware relationship, and where that's going to the next level. Uh, what other solutions and whole offers we'll bring to market. Uh, you know, it, it's every year you kind of come back and there's always a little level of skepticism from the client base about what the latest things EMC and Cisco are doing together are, and are they real, and then kind of the next year you see the interest level all right, we want to really want to talk to you about this. So, uh, spent a lot of time with the folks with EMC and many various customers while I'm here today. Uh, definitely seeing a lot of talk about next generation data center architectures and again, you know, cloud and how we bring this to market there as well. Okay, well, Dominic Delfino, thank you for joining us here in theCUBE. Exciting times in networking, lots going on obviously between the Cisco and EMC relationships and with VMware, big data, uh, lots of coverage on the, the Data Scientist Summit here at EMC World, so thank you for joining us here on theCUBE and hope you'll join us again sometime. Thanks again for having me, Stu. Pleasure being here. Thanks.